Welcome to MH2801 video segment on the discontinuity of a function of a complex variable across a branch cut. Now, in the previous video segments, we have talked about how the ln z function can be treated as a single value function on a Riemann surface that looks very much like this one here shown here if I can get my pen to show, okay here it is so this is the Riemann surface of ln z uh, the, the complex logarithm and you can see that it is single value but it's it, in order for it to be single value you require the Riemann surface to contain multiple branches and in fact the ln z function has infinitely many branches and but of course this is not convenient for defining con uh, contour integrals, so we uh, in introduce branch cuts to bring out only one single branch. So if we choose, if we choose n equals to zero, if we recall what n equals to zero means, it actually means that uh, ln z equals to ln r, okay, plus uh, i theta plus n to n pi okay so if n is equal to 0 then we call this the principal branch and for the most part most people will just work with the principal branch now you can see that this is the principal branch and I've stolen this from uh, Wolfram Well uh, and here is a blown up version of the principal branch okay so between the two branch cuts this is the principal branch. Now as you can also see, you can also see what happens to the value of ln z as you go across the branch cut. Because on the complex plane, what happens is that when you view it on this, uh, when you view the branch cut on this, on this Riemann surface, nothing seems wrong, but if you view it but if you view it on the complex plane uh, where we have x is, is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z then what we find is this okay so let me first draw in the uh, branch cut uh, in this case here the branch cut is introduced along the negative real axis and what happens is that if you take if you look at the value of the function let's say at this point okay versus at this point okay that will correspond to a point here and a point here and you can see that okay their function values are very very different so how do we uh, explain this if we restrict our arguments to be within the first within the principal branch so first of all let's uh, consider this particular complex number it has a uh, modulus r and it has argument that is very close to being minus pi and its argument theta is maybe is minus pi plus epsilon okay now for the other complex number i say it's just across the branch cut its modulus is again r but its argument it theta is equals to pi plus epsilon so what is the discontinuity that we expect to encounter if we just wander across the branch cut not knowing that actually we are going across uh, we're going from one branch of the Riemann surface to another branch of the Riemann surface so first of all let's write down f of uh, let's say let's call this point a and let's call this point b so first, first of all, let's write down f z a. So this is equals to ln r. The modulus of the function is still r, so it's not change. Okay, plus i. Now theta itself is minus pi plus epsilon. Okay, minus pi plus epsilon. Uh, since n is zero, because we are dealing with the principal branch, so this is ln r plus i epsilon minus i pi 
Now what about the other point, point B? So if we evaluate the function value at point B, we again find that this is long r because the modulus is the same, but the argument is now rather different. The argument is now pi minus epsilon. Okay, so I made a mistake earlier on. So let me write this out nicely. This is a minus, not a plus. Okay, and then we come back and we continue uh, writing down the value of the function in detail. So this is ln r plus i pi minus i epsilon. Okay, and then we want to see what is the difference between the two functions. So fzb minus fza. Okay, in the limit, in the limit of epsilon goes to zero. That means we bring the two points closer and closer to the branch cut itself. But at the same time, keeping the modulus, their modulus, uh, moduli the same, we find that the difference between them is actually equals to i pi minus minus i pi. So let me circle them. Okay, so it is equals to i pi minus of minus i pi, and therefore the answer is two pi i. Okay, so this is the discontinuity in value you would encounter in the natural log the complex logarithm if you move a wander across the branch cut. Now does that mean that the function itself is discontinuous? Actually, of course the answer is no, because if I move here from this point, following the the Riemann surface, obviously there is it, the, the, the function is continuous. And if I come from here and if I want if I go over uh, following the Riemann surface, of course the function is also continuous, but of course the problem is I would have moved from the principal branch to the branch n minus minus n equals to minus one here, and from here if I wander across the branch cut, I've wandered onto the n equals to plus one branch of the uh, ln z. So uh, for for the purpose of constructing close contours for complex contour integration, uh, we don't want to allow ourselves that kind of freedom to uh, arbitrarily wander off different branches because then the contour will not be close. So this is the reason why we introduce branch cuts. But it is important to recognize that there are discontinuities across a branch cut. Uh, we won't actually introduce contours that run across branch cuts, but we may actually introduce contours that hug the branch cut. For example, a let me introduce a different color. So, for example, we may introduce a cont uh, integration contour that runs parallel to this particular branch cut, goes around the uh, branch point, and then run parallel to the other branch cut. And this we will actually encounter in a example in a future video segment.